Diablo 4 just got a ton of new information from data mining. We also have a few new hotfixes that were recently applied. We have the reason why your damage might suck and how to fix that. We have some new promo stuff that's happening for Diablo. And a few neat tricks for imprinting and being able to use certain items at certain levels. We also got to talk about a lot of issues that have been happening for a lot of people on several different occurrences. And a potential secret that has been found from data mining. We got a lot to talk about. What's up, world tripper? Back in the video, you're checking out all things Diablo 4. Okay, so let's just get into the data mining stuff. Is there's been a lot there discovered with both secret level things and other things of that nature. So through data mining and the help of a bunch of Discord people, they have been able to discover essentially a secret cow level. However, because of most of the things that's going on right now, it seems that a lot of these items have not been enabled yet. So I'm guessing this will probably appear with season one, but we have a ton of information here and a lot of the secret items that you could try to collect for now. Although seemingly you won't be able to find any of these as they have been pretty much disabled or not enabled yet. Now this could just be a facade as I think even Rod Ferguson said when the game first came out or when the game was first coming out that the cow level wouldn't exist because he didn't want to mess with the tone of the game. However, maybe now that the story's done and over with, most people have beaten the game or at least done through most of the campaign, probably seemingly will enable that cow level or enable the items to access the cow level. Now as far as the other data mining stuff, someone else discovered a lot of things using a malware analysis tool where they found a ton of different skills that just aren't in the game yet and a bunch of different skills that are activated on certain things they also found something called master item flippy which seems to be a switch that was present for all normal types of items there's also something called a set piece switch which a lot of people didn't want set pieces for d4 seeing as that was kind of like one of the main negatives about d3 however there does seem to be some sort of indicator for set items and there's also a bunch of instances here hinting that they may or may not be looking at bringing back some type of followers. And we also additionally have something like a clan bank tab, which I think would help out a ton with the current storage situation. However, there's a lot of rumors there that they're either going to charge for more storage or that more storage will come with each season update. It's really bad right now. I think most people have their storage filled, especially because the storage is shared across multiple characters. And yeah, a lot of people are creating level 1 ults right now to essentially kind of house this another bank. So hopefully they take care of that sometime soon and add some sort of additional bank slot or even like this, have clan bank slots. Now apparently rune words were already in the alpha version of the game. And I guess they were a quarterly update and system which wrote little computer programs where one tune would activate under certain conditions that were linked to other runes with those effects. But it sounds like they got rid of it after a certain thing, so it was basically X under certain Y conditions would then activate those runes. But seemingly that was a scrapped concept, which happens a lot in games where they just leave the string files in. It's also to note that the game does reuse Diablo 3's engine, and a lot of the set and strings are probably coming from there as well. Sometimes it's just leftover stuff from when they port things over and kind of just reusing a lot of the assets. And for once, PC does seemingly have an advantage on this game. Everything seems tailored to the console and the controller, which I think is a good thing, but also a bad thing as the PC players do get kind of shafted in a lot of different areas. However, it does look like on PC, you are able to make your mount speed a lot faster than somebody that's on console. So as of right now, if you do not know, on PC, the farther that I have my mouse away from the horse, the faster that the horse actually goes. And seemingly this was ported from a console feature as if you use your joystick, the farther that you push your joystick to the left or to the right or etc the faster the horse would actually go so it seems like this feature was ported over to pc and wasn't optimized for the pc as most pc players don't want their horse to move slower the closer their mouse is it's, it's kind of difficult to tell where your mouse is you have to have it like all the way at the corner of your screen but apparently this actually gives us an advantage as the horse is actually faster on the pc and i'm hoping that they don't make the pc slower although that's probably blizzard's mo is to nerf everything before they do anything else Hopefully they don't nerf that and they kind of just make the console players a little bit faster and hopefully they fix the mouse problems as well as being distant to your mouse to the horse and maybe they just add like a role play option to have like the walk option in there. This was pointed out by a Reddit user named Competitive Trade. Now as far as some imprinting tips go, you can actually imprint alt items on your main which will give a higher level aspect without increasing the level requirement. I've noticed from a few Quinn streams that he's tried to imprint an item and it made his item increase in level. So essentially you're using the code codex power on the lower level items but you can imprint the higher level codex on 
onto them. So if you didn't know, the actual codex item in the barrier section is actually much higher than pretty much any drop that you'll get. It's seemingly if you take an item from your alt and then send it to your main, you can then use the codex power to in imprint it with that higher level codex, send it back to your alt, and now your alt can use a barrier that has like 8,000 damage resist. Which brings me on to the next section here, which is why your damage might suck or why it just might not be up to par. And that's because there's additive bonus damage and there's multiplicative bonus damage. So for example, like on my sorcerer, I'm trying to take a lot of the glyphs that have the multiplicative damage which you'll see a little X multiplier. Essentially, if it doesn't have that X multiplier, it's probably an additive damage. And so essentially, if you had additive damage, if you said, let's say, let's take 10,000 damage, and additive damage at 20% would be 1 plus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.02, which would equal 14,000 damage. However, for multiplicative damage, you would do 10,000 times 1.2 times 1.2, which would then give you 14,400 damage. And that's because the multiplicative damage is applied to the damage total after the previous bonus has already been applied. So you really want to shoot for the multiplicative damage bonus, but also the added damage bonus. And then of course, there's the damage buckets there that you kind of want to separate yourself out from on your gear. So things that say damage to or damage while are in the same bucket. So even like things like imbiber, which increases my attack power by 4,000. If I swap out imbiber for another glyph, I actually get more damage, even though my attack power decreased. And the reason why is because the game calculates it based on the primary stat and is using that as a sort of baseline to calculate your attack power. There's a big in-depth thread here if you want to go through it that I'll leave down below that kind of has everything explained in multiple layers that you can kind of check out. But yeah, essentially you want things from different damage buckets. You don't want too many damage twos on a piece of gear and you don't want too many damage whiles. Best thing is to have a base damage stat, then a damage two or a damage while and then vulnerable damage and crit damage will all be separate. Now we also have some advertising in Taiwan that's been happening and it almost looks like Lilith has been replaced but this is actually a Taiwanese celebrity. I believe her name is Jolin Tsai. However, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sorry. She's a famous female pop star and essentially Blizzard is definitely expanding their marketing budget for this. Almost like the Megan Fox promo that was happening over here. It seems like we're having the kind of Taiwanese version over there of their kind of local famous person or pop star. Now Blizzard actually did deploy a bunch of different hotfixes or at least one this morning they have been doing them like crazy but it seems like they're only deploying hotfixes for exploits there was another xp exploit and people were farming like 40 million xp per hour basically people were like resetting an event over and over again it was something that was happening inside of a nightmare dungeon but now that's been completely fixed and everything i've covered in this video so far is going to be in the description down below if you want to check it out also i'm going to have a link down below to my build guides if you're curious on what sorcerer build i'm using as the blizzard ice spikes build seems to be the one they're actually using on lilith and it's really good in my opinion for high tier nightmares as well. So if you want to check out the Sork builds, I will have those links down below. But that should about cover for today's video. And if you like, 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 subscribe. And until the next one. Deuces.